I've been playing around with a little patch idea I'd like to share with you. And the idea is taking a spare filter that might be in your system and using it as a wave shaper for your VCO. Place it between your VCO and your normal VCF VCA chain, have it track the keyboard just like your oscillator does, and treat it like a wave shape control to alter the waveforms your synth or your oscillator may have come with. I've been having a lot of fun with this, so let's go ahead and give it a run here. Now, take this Mother 32. This VCO just has two very simple waveforms. A square wave, and a sawtooth wave. And that's the harmonic spectrum they have. I can go ahead and pulse width modulate the square wave. I can add a little bit of filter cut off an envelope. But to be honest, there is a limit to the number of timbres I can get out of those two raw waveforms. What if we instead altered the harmonic content of those waves using a spare filter? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and take the sawtooth wave out of the Mother 32, patch it into this blue channel so you can see what's going on. That's the normal waveform. Take its output, go to the audio input on this particular filter, a doper SEM filter, then take its output and put it back into the green channel of the data. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is that they are phase inverted. The output of doper filters in general tend to be out of phase with what comes into it. If this is all you're listening to, it doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference if you try to mix it back in with other waveforms in your VCO. So for the sake of clarity in the display, and also for something I'll demonstrate later, I'm going to invert the output of the doper filter back to the way it was on the way in. You don't need to do this. This is just Chris being Chris, to be honest. So I'm gonna run it through. I wrap three, two, one, which has a handy phase invert switch. Run that into my green channel here. Out of phase, flip the phase, ta-da, they're back aligned again. Then finally, let's take that output and run that into the auxiliary input on the Mother 32. So in the case of its sawtooth wave, this is what the normal sawtooth sounds like. Has a little bit of envelope on it. I'll open that for now. And this is what the process sawtooth through the SCM sounds like. I'm gonna put a weight on my keyboard just to sustain this. Now the first thing you notice is it's lower in level, but the SCM filter does have an input level control. They can drive it all the way up to clipping. But the most interesting thing is when I start adding a little bit of resonance and start bringing down the cutoff. A little resonant there and start sweeping the frequencies. Now I've shaped the harmonic response of this VCO compared to its normal wave shape. Something a little bit more vocal-ish, maybe a little more resonance. Play with the level, decide how much I'm overdriving. Changes the amount of fundamental in the signal. Go ahead and sweep that until I get a tone I like. Oop, wrong control. Now the next trick is, is I want that processing, that altered waveform to track my keyboard. The challenge is I need the filter to track one volt per octave. Now the nice thing about dope for filters is virtually all of them have a CV1 input that does track one volt per octave, more or less. Not perfect, but pretty darn close. And a lot of other filters have this as a default mode as well. If your filter doesn't, you might need to play some games like bring your keyboard voltage into this, plug its output to a tuner, crank the resonance up to where it self oscillates and play around with the modulation depth until one octave of change on the keyboard is one octave of change on the pitch. But Dofer's made this easy for us. I'm gonna take a copy of my keyboard voltage and run that into the CV1 input. Do a little retuning here. Now that will track the keyboard. I can play other games with different settings, really crank up the resonance, single out individual harmonics.
Now remember, this is coming into the mother in place of its normal VCO. I still have my normal processing chain afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and envelope its own filter. Maybe a little faster decay there. And since the mother happens to have a waveform mixer, I can go ahead and mix this external audio signal that's gone through my filter with one of the built-in waveforms. Mixing it with its own sawtooth isn't all that interesting. Go ahead and open up the filter here. Kind of a wet-dry amount. But it's really fun if you can mix it in with a different waveform, like the square wave. A little bit of pulse with modulation as well. Envelope it. That's the sound that I just don't normally get out of a Mother 32. It's just because I took a spare filter and ran one of its wave shapes through it. Let's go ahead and swap stuff around. Let's go ahead and um, process the square wave that way instead. I'm gonna put the mix back over to my external sound, turn off the cutoff for now. My pulse with modulation is coming through. Play with the input level. Massive overdrive. Straighter sound. Choose a harmonic I want to emphasize. Oh, I like that sound. Now the normal square wave sounds like this. Process square wave is like this. And again, I can mix it back in with itself. Or mix it in with the sawtooth wave. And introduce filter with a bit of envelope. Very different sound than I normally get out of the Mother 32. I've not even introduced another oscillator. I'm just shaping the waveform of one of them by routing it through a filter first. Now, in addition to this low pass sound, which is pretty cool, this filter does have other filter modes, including high pass, band pass, and notch when you blend together low pass and high pass. So let's go ahead and try some different modes here and get some different sounds. I'm sweeping the filter's output from low pass to high pass. You can see how the harmonic spectrum has changed and we can retune which harmonic we focus on. Get a little bit more of a vocal sound. And you can find we can almost tune which harmonic we're emphasizing here. That's kind of an unusual one there. Let's blend it back in with our square wave. That's perhaps a little bit more complimentary. And of course, we can always blend together low pass, high pass to get notch. Now we're just removing a set of frequencies. Works better actually lower resonance settings. There we go, a little bit more separation. And this filter also has a bandpass output where we can really emphasize specific harmonics. There we increase the resonance. Again, nice for adding that vocal-like format. And we can blend the square wave back in. A little bit of envelope filter. A little bit of pulse width modulation now. We 
shake it a little bit. Need a little bit more drive. Add some more bass back in. So that's why it's fun to use a filter that does have multiple modes to give you even more variety of sounds to choose from. Of course, different filters will introduce their own characteristics to the sound. For example, take the Wasp filter. For one, as you change its level, the character of its resonance, and particularly notches on those higher harmonics, really changes. Look at the right side of the spectrograph as I sweep the level control. Wasp filter is also known for having particularly interesting or unstable resonance. Look what happens as I adjust resonance near its max. And we'll go ahead and play a few notes in that unstable condition. Now I mentioned a bit about phase inverting here. Let's go back to the case where I have the square wave being mixed in with a process square wave. Normally, it's like a wet dry control. But if I did not invert that waveform, we'll get some phase cancellation. In particular, it cancels out that fundamental harmonic a bit. Same happens with the sawtooth. You can treat that as an alternate set of sounds if you want, one with a weakened fundamental or strengthened. I'll go back to my original patch here, processing the sawtooth wave. And let's go ahead and just go back to just my process filter. Now right now, I just have the filter tracking the keyboard. I could go ahead and further modulate this filter if I wanted to. Now for example, I could take the LFO out, I'll take the triangle from the mother, break it into the spare CV input on the doper filter, that's CV2. Increase that depth. Almost like its own pulse with modulation. Mix in a little bit of the square wave here. Open up the filter, so you hear what's going on. I could feed a second envelope to this filter if I want to, and sometimes I will do that just to add a little attack spit to the sound. So I have a very fast envelope down here. I said the LFO. I'm going to go ahead and take that envelope output, get in here somewhere in the cables. Let's go ahead and increase CV2 mount. Just have a little brief spit attack, a longer decay would sound like this. And that's without using the filter on the mother. I could still do a slow decay filter on the mother. So I'm combining the two different filter responses or envelopes. You could even frequency modulate this filter with another oscillator. I could take the square wave from the mother. I happen to be running it into data to synchronize the display. I go ahead and take that multi output of its square wave, and now I'm going to use that square wave to frequency modulate my filtered sawtooth. Here it gives me a different sound, particularly with a mod. Or if I have a second oscillator, I could use a second oscillator that might be detuned to go ahead and modulate the cutoff of my wave shaping filter. Pretty cool. Mix back in the mother square. Reintroduce the mother's filter. Now 
nice rich sound, and most importantly, it's a sound different than you get from the stock waveforms that came with my VCO. So if you have a modular synthesizer, and if you have a few different filters, if you have a patch going, or maybe you're not using one of the filters, think about putting that filter in between your VCO and your normal processing chain, wave folders or whatever, and use it as a wave shaper just to give you more variety in harmonic mix and wave shape coming out of that VCO.